Welcome to my shop. This is the place where all of my grandchildren's toys originate. I think uh, you're all aware that uh, our guild is in trying to encourage all of our members to make toys at home so that we can collect them at Woodcraft and donate them to uh, United Way and they will further distribute it to children's charities. So uh, we have to do things differently now with the COVID problem. So uh, instead of assembling at Woodcraft, we're working from home. So today um, I'm going to demonstrate uh, one of the toys that's on our website. And uh, if you have any uh, questions about toys, uh, go to the uh, Toys for Kids page. You'll see a whole bunch of pictures of toys. If you click on any of them, you will come to a set of instructions. Here's a set of toys that appears on the website that I've uh, made in order to validate all of the instructions. So I can pretty much attest to, at least for these, the instructions all work uh, pretty well. They've all been tested through. Uh, today we're gonna make a um, train engine uh, like the one you just saw. Uh, this is one of the ones on the website. It's um, a fairly straightforward toy to make. Um, it involves several different machines, at least the way I've made it. Uh, a drill press, uh, a bandsaw, disc and belt sander, router uh, table. The wheels uh, were purchased. Materials involve a block of wood, a couple of different dowels, and the wheels. Here's the instruction sheet uh, that's on the website and it contains a list of the tools, the materials, step-by-step uh, -step instructions, and most importantly it includes a scale schematic uh, or pattern and it's even um, got a designation for one inch so when you print it out you can take a ruler and make sure that you're scaled Properly. There's a couple of different ways to approach this. Obviously, you can take all those measurements and transfer them to a block of wood, or you can take a simpler approach um, that I do is I, I print it out, make sure it's uh, scaled properly. I cut out the pattern itself, and I'm going to show you a real slick way of, of uh, attaching this to... Uh, to the block of wood. So this is uh, 3M general purpose spray glue number 45, which is not the strongest. Um, but what I do is I spray the back of the pattern and then I'll uh, stick it onto the wood. Be aware that it's really easy to take this off when you're done. You just take a brush with some mineral spirits and dab it on the paper. Let it sit for a minute and it'll peel right off. Take a paper towel and wipe the residue off and it will not interfere with any finishing. So I'm going to just spray this. Okay, so um, I've cut this block of wood uh, to the dimensions that are uh, included in the instructions. Uh, you can easily use a 2x4. It's one and a half inches thick and uh, um, you can shape a 2x4 to the same thing. This just happens to be a block of hardwood. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paste this on here, take advantage of the squareness of it, and get the bottom lined up perfectly to the to the edge of the wood and the right hand side. And then I'll make it really easy to cut out as you'll see in a minute. Okay, so now I'm ready to drill holes. So the easiest way I've found to uh, drill these holes for the axles and the window is to start by just giving myself a little starter punch in the right place. Um, it isn't terribly important how these, uh, how these come out. Not exactly precision work, but um, so I'm going to drill these 930 second holes, get this lined up. Uh, 
Okay, so we got our axle holes drilled. The next step is the is the window hole. All right, so now we've got all the holes drilled that we need, and the next step is to start cutting out the uh, engine body. Okay, there's a number of ways you can cut out the body. Uh, you can do everything on a bandsaw, or I'm going to choose to do uh, partially on the uh, table saw and partially on the bandsaw. Uh, and the, the advantage of doing what I'm doing now is that you get a nice clean cut where the bandsaw is going to leave a lot of uh, uh, tooth marks that have to be sanded out later. So uh, I'm just going to run this through. It'll be a partial partial cut uh, the front of the cab. I have a nice smooth cut here. Now I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and cut this. I've got the uh, bandsaw fence set up so that I can slide this right through here and it's going to cut right along that line and intersect with the cut I just made, hopefully. Now I'm going to cut the 45, but I'm going to leave some distance because I'm going to use the uh, belt sander to smooth it out. Okay, so I've got the uh, minor gauge set at 45 degrees to match that. Now I'm just going to slide this in here. So you've got it sanded pretty smooth here, right, right to the line. And I'll use a piece of sandpaper on a block a little later to get this, to get rid of the bandsaw uh, teeth uh, marks. Okay, so this has been uh, all sanded now. And the next step is to round over uh, all of the edges, uh, except the top where we're going to put a, a roof on. So it'll be all the other, uh, all the other edges. Okay, so that gives us some nice finished uh, edges and need to, a little bit of light sanding and that'll be all set. Uh, so I've cut out uh, a piece of wood for the uh, roof uh, according to the dimensions and the instructions. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to taper both top and bottom front and back edges. And then we're going to go back over to the router and round the uh, sides. So again, not exactly precision work, but uh, good enough for a, for a nice toy. Okay, so that's a uh, finished product for the roof. Now we'll go uh, show you how to how I attach it. There's a trick I typically use uh, that uh, I've been successful with over the years. It, may, it just makes life a lot easier uh, when you're going to glue something up and, and to keep it in place. So what I typically do is I, I take some uh, number 19 wire brads and a very tiny uh, drill and drill a couple of holes. Doesn't have to be very deep. And then hammer in the brads and cut off the heads with a pair of diagonals. Okay. Then I can turn it over and again we're not doing high precision work here so I'm just going to kind of eyeball centering the roof on the on the engine body. Okay, then press and then another little trick to save some groping around later is to mark the the edge of where it intersects. 
so I can get back to that same point without groping around. Okay, now I've got my marks. I'm gonna just gonna drill a little bit into here so that the protruding brads can can center and if I've marked it well I shouldn't have to grope around to get it right back into those holes. So, and then it's a matter of just uh, putting a little glue on there and clamping it and uh, we'll be done with that. <clears throat> the uh, boiler that goes on the front. And what I've done here is I've, I've uh, marked uh, just a pencil line where I'm going to sand a flat so it fits on there. And then in order to drill the hole for the smokestack, uh, I've just carried up a line down the center here and across and made a cross mark where um, at the right distance according to the, the plan. Okay, so I'm going to keep this as vertical as I can and just sand it down to that line I've made across. Again, nothing magic about the dimension. Just uh, give yourself enough uh, flat space so that you can get it to stick on there. Okay, so we've got a nice flat surface that we can stick on there. So that now the next step is the... Um, to drill a hole for the smokestack. So, same kind of procedure. And the next step is uh, to drill the hole for the smokestack. So it's a, it's a half inch dowel uh, that the smokestack uh, is made of. And so I've got a half inch drill in the drill press and um, I want to come down three-eighths of an inch, mark that, and since I can't hold that as the drill spinning, I'm going to put it in a vise. Then I'm going to set the depth stop so that I've got a roughly three-eighths deep hole. All right, so now we've got our, our smokestack hole. Okay, for the top of the smokestack, what I need is a quarter inch thick uh, slice uh, off of this uh, dowel. And um, this was demonstrated by by someone in a previous uh, video, which I thought was pretty slick. So I've got my crosscut sled set up um, with the uh, stop set at the exact quarter inch dimension that I need for here. Just hold that against this back part, move it out of the way so the piece doesn't go flying. I glued the uh, that slice of dowel onto the top of a of a half inch dowel, and uh, according to the instruction dimensions. And now what I'm just going to do is is taper the top of it just for aesthetics using the uh, belt sander here. This is just a convenient way of of uh, setting the angle that I'm going to sand it to. The next step is uh, gluing the uh, boiler uh, onto the uh, body of the of the train engine, and uh, once again, I'm going to use the, uh, the 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 trick of uh, pinning it so that when I glue it, it'll stay where it belongs.
and then just again eyeballing centering it and a little bit of glue could have used the uh, blue tape again but probably didn't need it this time a little bit of glue and clamp and uh, then the next step would be to glue in the um, dowel and so we're progressing right along here next step is uh, finishing uh, you want to finish the body before uh, you put the uh, wheels on so uh, this is one I made a little earlier and shellacked um, as I said the wheels are purchased uh, again the dimensions are all in the instructions so um, the wheels are also shellacked and then uh, it's a matter of cutting the axles and the easiest way to do that is to uh, want to put uh, washers quarter inch washers Trick, the trick with the axle cutting is to make sure that you've uh, got enough space so that your wheels will turn easily without binding. So I just cut a piece of cardboard that I can stick in there, get the, uh, get the axles even with the edges of the wheels. Mark the dowel, go over back to the crosscut sled and cut that and the axle should be a perfect length. That's one I cut earlier. So now it's just a matter of taking a Q-tip, uh, cut the head off it so you have a little uh, cardboard shaft, dip it in the glue, put a little glue in the, in the wheel hole and uh, glue it up you don't want to you don't want to put the glue on the axle because it'll uh, spread into the inside here and glue the wheel to the body of the engine put on your wheels again a little glue and should be all set and you're done so not too hard to make. Um, you can make several of them in a day, uh, allowing, of course, for the finish to dry. But uh, they make a great toy. Kids, uh, kids really love them. Uh, another toy that uh, I can tell you is really, really popular with toddlers, uh, especially when they first start to walk, is a, uh, a dog that uh, gets pulled along uh, if you put an eye hook in here and tie a rope to it and attach a, a ball that you can pull it with and uh, and uh, these things become actually pets and they, <laughs> they they're they're following these kids around everywhere in the house and, and even uh, outside I've made a lot of these and, and I can tell you how popular they are so uh, a couple of uh, interesting uh, techniques involved in making these things. First of all, again, complete instructions on the website. Uh, just click on the picture of the of the dog on the website, and uh, one of the things in the instructions is the patterns. So the pattern includes the the uh, dog body, uh, the various pieces of the legs, uh, ear, and and the wheels with all the dimensions including dimensions for the ball and the tail. Critical part of this is to be really, really accurate when you cut and sand the leg pieces. Uh, as you can see, the tolerances are pretty tight. So uh, very important to get these shapes uh, 
perfect as you cut and sand them. So uh, to start, again, a block of wood, paste on the um, uh, template for the body. Uh, start with, again, drilling all of the cross holes. Uh, there's a, a, a hole back in here that comes in this way after you've made the cut out the body and everything uh, that I chuck the dog in the vise and set it up so that the drill comes in at exactly the right angle uh, to make that hole and then flipping it over, drilling a hole here for the screw eye that you attach the, um, the pull cord to. So um, that's making the body. Uh, again, I cut it out, um, just leaving a little bit of gap beyond the line, take it to a spindle sander, and uh, sand it right to the line all the way around. You'll need, uh, you need two of these patterns because you've got um, ears and legs on, on both sides of the dog. So you need to print out two of those, cut out the, um, the shapes. Here's the two ears, the, uh, all the different uh, leg pieces. The tricky part of this is recognizing that you've got mirror image pieces. So if you look at this piece, it's got the countersinks for the heads of the uh, axle pegs uh, on one side. Whoops. If you uh, turn it around, you got the identical piece, but the heads, the uh, countersinks, are on the other side. So um, the easiest way I know to deal with that, each of these pieces has a, has a, uh, a mark on the template that says CS and gives you the drill size. So that's a countersink. And if you paste these on in a, in a way that you can circle the countersinks that are on this side, put a square on the countersinks that are going to be on the other side, and then drill a pilot hole, a small pilot hole through so that you can flip it over find your pilot holes and use the right drill uh, and depth set to countersink on this side. Then cut them all out. Again, go to the spindle sander and sand to the line. Uh, again, I can't stress how important it is to, to be really accurate in sanding it right to the line or right at the line. So that's uh, the way you do the the ears and the legs and the body. The wheels, um, and again, and this is uh, years of making wheels and finding the best solution. Um, so what I'm going to do is just do a little bit of work on this to show you how to make four identical wheels very easily. Uh, the trick to cutting out wheels, is, again, paste the uh, uh, pattern onto the right thickness wood. Uh, I've drilled out the holes, and uh, now what I'm going to do is roughly cut out the wheel just beyond the line. So uh, I've got the four wheels r roughly cut out, holes drilled. Got three eighth inch axle holes here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount these on a 3 8 bolt. And the first one I'm going to put on so that the pattern is facing out on that side. The ones in the middle don't matter. And then, oops, this, and then the one on the end with the pattern facing out again. Washers on both sides just to protect everything. And Tighten this up, put it into a Jacobs chuck. And I can see the I can see the dimension that I'm trying to achieve here, but I'm also gonna set a caliper 
to the uh, to the mention one and three quarter diameter. Again, you want to make sure you get this as close as possible to the to the right dimension. And so, uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to actually go through the turning of these, but the idea is you turn them all together and uh, you end up with a set of four identical wheels that are exactly the right size. And then uh, uh, you can, um, I just, I use a sanding mop to uh, take the edges off them. You can use regular sandpaper or uh, even round them over if you want. Uh, on the uh, on the router table, although it's a little hard to hold these things to uh, to uh, route route the uh, round over on them. So that's the idea for the wheels. One of the other tricks that uh, I've uh, learned over the years is how to drill a hole perfectly centered in a ball. And uh, to do that, I've made a couple of jigs that. Uh, you can make easily. Typically, I'd put this in a drill press vise so uh, it stays where I need it. Um, take a Forstner bit, uh, drill a hole down that would comfortably um, hold whatever ball size you're trying to drill into, and um, just uh, countersink that for a ways. And then uh, you end up with a dimple, of course, in the bottom from the Forstner bit. Then you can take the bit, um, the size of the hole you want to go completely through, and uh, line line that up, and then you can mount your uh, put your ball in the hole, and you're perfectly lined up with with that center hole. So if you're going to have a countersink, which is nice to have for the uh, knot to to fit into. Uh, for the pull string. So use a Forstner bit to countersink a hole and then then chuck the uh, drill that you're going to use to go through the rest of the way and uh, finish the through hole. Uh, same thing with the uh, tail ball, different size ball, but you just want to, again, you want a, a hole that you can put the dowel into um, to put into the back of the dog. So again, just uh, Counter, countersink uh, uh, a hole with a Forstner bit, and uh, then you can line up the right drill size with that um, depre that uh, dimple that's left from the Forstner bit. Put the ball in and drill as deep as you need. So that's uh, those are all the tricks with the dog. It's um, uh, as, as I say, it's a great toy. The kids really love those things. But with any of the toys on the website, uh, please don't hesitate to give me a call or, or send me an email with any questions you might have. And uh, I'll be happy to walk through the steps with you or uh, give you the benefit of whatever experience I've had making them. So um, good luck with making toys. I hope you can take the time and, and make a few. And uh, I know Nguyen is uh, anxious to uh, get as many as he can together and deliver them to United Way uh, well before the holiday season. So, happy woodworking. If you're getting ready to make some wooden toys, like these cars here, the wheels can be great, and a lot of people sell some really sharp ones. But if you want to make your own, especially if you've got a lot of scrap wood around, let me show you how to do it. It's real easy to make them. For example, these which I made out of plywood, as well as these, in case you want to make them different sizes. To make holes, I use hole saws. They come in all sorts of sizes. Many of them come with a central quarter inch bit. This bit's perfect for making the central parts where the axles fit in. They fit on just about any size hole saw that you need based on the size of what you're trying to make. Once you've got this, you're ready to go. Wheels can be made out of just about any piece of scrap wood you have. Here, I have a piece of plain down, reclaimed wood that I had lying around. The trick when cutting out the wheels 
is to make sure you don't run the hole saw all the way through on your first pass. Here, I'm cutting till it just passes through and the center of the bit passes through the bottom, but not the rest of the hole saw. When I'm done, I'll flip the wood over using that hole that went through as a pilot hole. Let me go ahead and show you how I do this. You noticed I didn't cut all the way through, but center hole is there. So now I'll use that as a guide for going ahead, lining up the saw and cutting out the rest of the wheel. I only need to cut down just far enough until the wheel releases from the rest of the wood. And there it is, pops right out. All I've got to do now is grab the wheel, twist it out, and there it is. Now that you've got all the wheels cut out, it's time to go ahead and clean up all of these rough edges. Now, since these wheels all have quarter inch pilot hole that went all the way through the middle, I'm able to go ahead and put them over a quarter inch bolt. You can also use quarter inch all thread. What I have to do is make sure that I've got a nice big fender washer on one side, slide in all the wheels I need to have sanded, and once they're on, I'll go ahead and place a nice big fender washer on the other side, and then I'll go ahead and I'll put a nut over there and tighten the whole thing into place. I'm going to go ahead and show you three different ways that I'm able to use to go ahead and get these things sanded down. One option is just go ahead and put that bolt in your drill or drill press. Turn it on and sand away. If you happen to have a lathe, take advantage of it. Go ahead and put that threaded rod right into your lathe chuck and go to town. The third method I wanted to show you is for you pen turners out there. Nice thing is, is that the mandrel for the pen turning is a quarter of an inch. It's perfect for our wheels. I'll go ahead and slip on a bushing, fender washer, throw those wheels on the mandrel, finish it off with another fender washer, the bushing, and then tighten it up. Once that's in place, you're able to really easily go ahead, sand those up, and if you want, you can even go ahead and put a little bit of a contour to those wheels with your cutting tools. Now that your wheels are finished, it's time to go ahead and put on the axles. I use oak dowels myself. The generic hardwood ones that they sell at the big box stores really aren't strong enough to hold up to kids' play. For the first wheel, I'll go ahead and I'll put on uh, the glue right on the axle, pull it in the hole, and tap it into place. For the second wheel, once this is mounted to the car, I'll only put the glue on the inside of the wheel. That way I don't have all this excess that you see here spitting out and getting onto the car itself and gluing the wheel into place. That's all there is to it.